Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options. And this is the morning market prep video for Friday, March 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh my goodness. Well, how about we settle in, grab yourself something to drink, and let's take a look at the Friday edition of the morning market prep video. Well, 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 what an ugly day we had yesterday. It was, it's just amazing. Um, you know, when you think about it, we went from um, record, record market highs to bailout conditions, and we did that in less than a month. What an amazing um, sell off this has been as that coronavirus continues to just pound and pound and pound on economies around the world and continue to spread around the world you know it was just the other day when i mentioned the possibility that we could see a test down here of the um 2018 lows and it seemed like almost unreasonable to even um uh, think that that could occur and then here we are not only did we hit that we sliced right on through it like a hot knife through butter um, yesterday as we just continued to get a pile on and pile on and pile on of bad news with NBA, with NHL, with um, um, spring trainings being canceled, with large venue events being shut down, um, with um, airlines being uh, tremendously punished. And just it just the list just went on and on and on yesterday as those news reports came out. Um, driving the confidence lower and even with the Federal Reserve coming in with a uh, 500 billion dollar um, um, injection into the market didn't didn't seem to phase the market hardly at all so here we are um, this morning with a surprising recovery. Um, last night, in Japan sold off heavily. At one point, was down 10%. That was driving U.S. futures substantially lower. And um, Asia markets ended up closing right across the board last night. But we saw um, suddenly a recovery start to begin in the overnight uh, futures market. And this morning, it is really gaining some steam. So um, I got, when I first looked at the market this morning, we were looking at about an 800 point gap up. Um, right now, Dow futures are pointing to 1100 point gap up as we continue this really wild price action roller coaster in this, um, these emotional responses in the market that are just so extreme. It's, it's really hard to get your head around. Um, if we take a look here this morning, we're gapping up into this area right here. Now, as wonderful as that looks, um, and it, as wonderful it is to have an 1100 point gap up, let's keep in mind um, what this really looks like um, when we look at um, our, uh, our overall market. That 1100 point gap up is really not um, all that substantial considering the sell-off here and notice that we have resistance levels above we're still well below our 500 day moving average in fact we're so far below it it's just hard to imagine um, and we've got a lot of work to recover here so wonderful that we're seeing an 1100 point gain my question is on a, is that 1100 point gain going to hold throughout the day or will we get more of these bad news events that just keeps pounding down on the market um, we certainly know that the uncertainty of the economic impacts that um, are are just uh, they're going to be astounding um um, with all of these venues closing, businesses being damaged, um, the impacts are just going to be astounding. And um, there's no, we can't, we, we have nothing to shoot at yet. We have no target as to what that might end up being. Will this be short-lived? Will, will this virus run its course here in the United States in, in weeks? Or will it be months? We don't know. And um, that's the uncertainty that the market is dealing with and um, causing all of this turmoil 
that we see in in the charts so although we're gapping up 1100 points you're really going to have to cross your fingers and hold your breath that it can hold that through um, the close of today because we certainly could see a retest of those lows or even push even lower um, with the emotions of the market and then we go into the uncertainty of the weekend um, it is um, anything could could happen by monday morning so um my caution to you is to be very very careful if you do plan to trade today make sure that you're planning very carefully and understand that risk very carefully heading into the weekend because boy anything is possible and what a mess we have to try and recover from here and unfortunately we're a long ways from seeing uh, the end of this virus situation so who knows how much longer this can go on i actually heard a report um, from one analyst suggesting that they believe the market will lose half of its value before this is over uh, um, you know everybody has a prediction and and to me predicting is just kind of worthless we have to follow price action but just imagine if that were to occur um oh my gosh the the blood in the street would be pretty pretty devastating at that point so let's take a look at the spy what's going on over here in the spy well not much better here in the spy we didn't hit the um uh, december um 2018 lows but my goodness we dropped hard yesterday and um we're getting a substantial back uh, bounce back up this morning um let me just remove some of these lines it it it's so hard to keep up with this market the way it's moving so we kind of we held some support stopped right in here tried to hold on to some to some support and you can see this morning we're gapping up into this area so substantial gap up here this morning but just note that we have so much technical damage here it's going to take a long time to recover from and there's certainly no guarantee that the market will hold these prices through the day um, expect an awful lot of whip back and forth um, in the market right now futures have been halted because of the extreme move back up so this is the third closure of the futures as we whip all over the place in this market so pretty wild anything is possible by the time we open let's take a look at the cues cues um, also breaking down through its 500 day moving average you know pretty brutal losing um, support right through here dropping into this next level of support uh, by the end of the day and now this morning bouncing back up substantially and if it can hold up here, that would be a recovery of its 500-day moving average, which would be a great thing to see heading into the weekend. Let's cross our fingers, hold our breath, that it can actually hold that going in through the weekend. And then IWM, my goodness, uh, there's not much worse here um, in, in the markets than IWM right now. The Russell is in a terrible situation. Having broken through its 2018 lows um, and sliced through them and just kept falling, um, we have a ugly situation here in the Russell and as you can see just um hardcore drop um here um and the gap back up this morning is substantial but oh my goodness we still have tremendous damage in this chart to recover from this gap back up is not even close to its uh december um 2018 low so pretty damaging um, price action in the markets to deal with let's take a look at the vix now the vix boy it just kept going and kept going and kept going yesterday and i know um, a lot of folks were thinking it would be impossible uh, for us to potentially see the um the VIX rise as much as the 2008 uh, sell-off, but by golly, we're pretty close to there and um, closing yesterday at about a 75 handle. Now this morning with the big gap up that we're um, looking to experience here this morning, um, I would 
I would guess that we're going to see this do a substantial pullback uh, today. But let's keep in mind, if we do pull back, um, the fears in, the, in this market are not going away anytime soon, and the, the massive impacts are not going away. So even if we catch a big rally, let's watch these pullbacks in here. If we catch support off of any of these levels, we could certainly continue to move on higher. Um, crossing our fingers, let's hope that this is over, that this is the worst it gets, but I'm afraid that might not be the case. Let's take a look at T2122. Um, we are so severely oversold here in a short-term condition. There's really no way to hardly even describe what's going on here. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel here um, on that selling. So a relief rally today would be wonderful. And, and that would be nice to see heading into the weekend. Again, let's just hope that it can hold um, throughout the day. Expect a lot of price volatility. Expect really big price swings. You know, we could move in minutes. We could move five, six hundred points back and forth. So uh, keep that in mind. We're going to swing all over the place uh, today. It could be pretty, pretty turbulent price action and very difficult for anyone except very, very experienced um, intraday traders. Uh, it's going to be pretty rough sledding uh, probably for weeks um, into the future here. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has a few things for us to look at. Um, this morning we have import ex export prices here at 8.30 this morning and we have consumer sentiment. Now it'll be interesting to see if these sentiment numbers start to be affected. Uh, we could begin to see some of our economic numbers start starting to trickle into um, ugliness here as people get more and more concerned about the impacts of the virus so keep an eye on that some of these some of these numbers could they've been helpful for so long uh, moving the market up they could start uh, slipping here at any moment in time we have um, a, a Quite a few companies reporting earnings today on the earnings calendar, but really not too many that uh, would be particularly notable. Um, about 70 companies reporting. A lot of them are going to be very, very small cap, small um, uh, penny type stock even uh, companies reporting today. But a couple notable that you might want to keep an eye on. BKE, BKE will be reporting today. It looks like it's trying to gap up this morning, but I got to tell you, I can't tell you if that's an earnings report showing uh, this wide bid ask spread um, yet, or if that is just the market bounce showing that move. And GoGo, GoGo is also reporting today and not exactly one of those companies that's really going to move uh, the market around. So uh, we're going to see a lot of that this morning. Um, obviously, what the market is really going to be concerned about is the overall of um, a potential recovery. That's what everybody's going to be thinking about. And I'm worried that that next big news event could drive us back lower. So we'll want to watch that carefully. So I want to um, ask all of you for a favor. If this is the first time you've seen this, these videos, if you could do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, the, I really am... Um, trying to be very helpful for everyone here in producing these videos um, every day. And I want to say thank you to everyone who shows your appreciation by clicking those thumbs up buttons and leaving comments. It's been such a crazy week and I've been so busy. I haven't been able to answer a lot of those comments. I apologize for that. Just trying to help folks um, with uh, their trading and it's just been crazy busy. But if um, you find these videos to be worthy, please please help me out and continue to do that. I, I appreciate it so much. I do, I do um, take the time to get those comments read. I just haven't had a ch chance to, to answer a lot of those and um, I will try to do that heading into this weekend. So thank you everyone. Um, 
Normally what I do is I talk about, um, at this point, I talk about stocks that could be setting up for potential trades. And I got to tell you, um, it's a pretty dangerous market to be thinking about uh, buying stuff up because of the massive whip in the market. But there are places that you might want to take a look, places that could be an, an opportunity. Uh, seeing stocks like Kroger. Now Kroger had a nice move up. Yesterday was punished pretty hard here. Looks like Kroger's gapping substantially higher. You know, even in the midst of a crisis, um, grocery stores were going to need food. Um, Kroger could come out of this pretty well. Keep an eye on Kroger. You might see um, that Costco, Costco just had a ugly, ugly sell-off yesterday. You can see it is now gapping up substantially this morning. And I suspect uh, people are going to continue to go to Costco, um, uh, buying up their supplies to um, stock up and while they protect themselves staying at home during this virus outbreak. So uh, keep an eye on stocks like that. Some of those consumables, places where you can buy those consumables, things that people are going to always need, might be a place to be looking uh, for some value right now after these big sell-offs. You can even look to uh, JD. JD, um, um, seeing a big bounce up this morning after a punishing sell-off yesterday um, rallying back jd.com might be a place to look um, as we um, you know get keep those consumers home they'll be doing a lot of uh, shopping online as well so take a look at some of those companies other places that you you might look and and this sounds kind of uh, kind of wild and crazy but what if a person were to, to just um, start picking up small pieces of the indexes and saying and now we certainly can't assume that this is the bottom and I don't want to try and, and give anyone the impression that this is the bottom but we we know that there's probably some value coming into some of these sectors some stocks you might pick up an ETF or something along those lines but only do it if you're willing to hold through tremendous volatility and willing to um um, willing to stand the the pressure of the back and forth that we're going to be seeing in the market. Make sure it's something that you just want to hold for a period of time. There's going to be a lot of these kind of stocks where folks are going to be looking to find value. Uh, companies that have been overly beat down um, and there's going to be a lot of that going on. So start looking at those charts uh, with that kind of thing in mind. Now, one of the things you can do is maybe start looking at some short-term charts, taking a look at a chart like the NASDAQ here. Um, this is a 15-minute chart, maybe waiting to see that this downtrend can break. If the downtrend breaks and we actually hold as support, then you might start getting that inspiration of picking up some of these value um, um, assets. And I'm not saying QQQs has actually reached that point yet. Just that might be a method of finding your way into um, some very, very good indexes, ETFs, stocks, uh, finding your way into those if this is going to be a recovery beginning now. Um, if if the 15 minute chart is just too fast for you then look at an hourly um, don't try to predict the bottoms um, what I want to do in in any uh, and I've and I've lived through many of these um, in my trading career is I don't want to predict when the bottom comes in everybody gets involved in trying to predict the bottom and honestly guys that is the job of the institutions they have the big money they're the ones that are going to decide when a bottom is in and um, they will show their fingerprints if we are willing and patient to watch and wait for that and if we you know perhaps maybe you go to an, to an hourly chart and say the bottom for me is going to be when that hourly breaks out of the downtrend proves to hold at support and then we still see that buying pressure coming in to uh, that index or ETF or stock and in that circumstance you can get into a trade without tremendous 
tremendous risk and uh, maybe have that opportunity to catch some of these value plays in the market. Just a couple of ideas. It's really, really difficult to recommend anything right now for a trade. It is so incredibly dangerous with the massive volatility. Although we're gapping up 1,100 points, we could easily see the day swing all the way back down to negative numbers today. So um, you've got to have a, a pretty strong stomach. This is this is not for the faint of heart if um, you decide to pick up some of the, the value type things that may be beginning to emerge in the market. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day and I want to wish you an even better weekend. Take care of yourselves. Have a great one. Try to put this market stuff aside. Take a breath, you know, relax. Um, it's okay to be in cash right now and it's okay to be protecting your cash. Capital. Don't worry about that. When the market settles down, there's going to be incredible opportunities here for us. So take that breath, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Take care, everyone.